how many floors or what height will the world's tallest building be in 2050 and why? <coughs> uh, if you're uh, you're going to ask me about uh, what is going to be the world's tallest building by 2050, uh, actually it's not that easy to answer. But let me trace back to uh, like uh, at the beginning of the last century. Back then, the world's tallest building was only like a 50, 50 meters. But uh, after one century today, the world's uh, tallest uh, like uh, residential building is like uh, 800 meters. So uh, it's really really hard to predict uh, what will be the height of the tallest building in the world by 2050. But I guess it should be a around 1,000 to 1,500 meters. <laughs> Any thoughts on where it might be? What country, what city, what region, if you had to guess? Mm -hmm. So if you ask my guess, I think it might be in Saudi Arabia, um, for example, Qatar or Dubai or cities like that, um, for the following reasons. Because in order to raise up such a high tower, uh, you need a few things. The first one, you need to have the plans and ambitions in place to enable that to happen. And secondly, you need to have enough financial resources and funding to ensure that will happen. And thirdly, you have to look at the uh, construction environment locally. Although we do admit that um, uh, locally in Saudi Arabia, there was a desert environment, but there was no ty ty typhoon, there was no earth earthquake. So uh, geologically speaking, that reason, uh, region was well uh, well pleased and uh, well prepared to raise up such a high building. But uh, if you want, want me to uh, name specifically which country it is, uh, I, I, I cannot, uh, I don't have the answer yet. What potential do you see for green walls or sky gardens and buildings incorporating nature into tall buildings? So in terms of um, interior vertical greenery, I think this part is already a kind of a mature technology and a mature formation. Uh, actually, I had already uh, tried to um, negotiate with uh, some North European country, uh, North European company to talk about um, the possibilities of um, setting up a rooftop outdoor vertical farm. It's a possibility. But I have to say that the technology is already there. It, te technology is ready. It's not that uh, technically difficult. Uh, but um, what really matters matters is the mindset and also the ambition of uh, the owners of the buildings and also the uh, other stakeholders like the investors. So it depends on how they, uh, what kind of environment they plan to bring to their users um, and uh, to the, uh, to the uh, livers in the buildings. So uh, generally speaking, technically uh, speaking, it's not that difficult. Uh, the technology is already ready. Uh, it's more of a matter of investment and mindset. I'm glad you brought up those other stakeholders because I wanted to ask if uh, you could name one or several structural changes that you think might need to happen between government, developers, architects, the design community um, to facilitate or to make happen uh, sustainable vertical urbanism, however you would define vertical urbanism. Okay, for Shanghai Center, I think um, uh, from the government point of view, definitely I think uh, we need uh, encouraging policies from the government. For example, in forms of uh, some tax incentives to support uh, sustainable green development code. And also um, from uh, the other industry policy support uh, point of view, I think uh, we do expect to see some policy, and we need some policies to support uh, development of green industries like uh, green environmental friendly equipment, materials, and other manufacturing processes. So right now in Shanghai and other places in China, the governments already have some subsidies in place. For example, if you want to embrace the green three star standard, which is a, a green building standard, uh, the a square meter subsidy uh, is a lot of money for you, so that's not a small amount. Uh, that's from the government side. From the architect's point of view, I don't think it's that difficult because um, uh, anyway, uh, most of them have the uh, consciousness and an awareness to embrace uh, sustainable and green standards. It's just that they may need some help or enablement of some new technologies to make it happen in their design. Okay, from the investor's point of view, I think um, uh, they need to Probably, I think it this way. Uh, their initial upfront investment may be a uh, big relatively speaking, but if you look at the longer time horizon, not only the construction phase, but into the operation phase, at the end of the day, their investment will pay off. Uh, for example, if they embrace uh, green three star or other green standards, the cost initially may seem to be 3% higher than, uh, uh, than instead of doing that. Uh, but uh, net in net into the operational stage, uh, this will translate, this additional investment will translate into their energy savings uh, in terms 
terms of energy efficiency. So think about uh, a big tower, big building like that. Um, uh, even uh, even a few percentage, like a uh, 20 percentage energy uh, efficiency gains or energy savings will translate into a, a, a lot of savings. Because for your reference, the daily operational cost of uh, such a big tower is around 1 million. So even 20 percent uh, cut will translate into a lot of uh, savings. Um, uh, actually, uh, we, we know, uh, all in all, let me summarize, I think uh, the initial investment for investors may be a little bit higher, but over the long run, the ROI, return on their investment, makes economic sense. Um, of course, it depends on whether they have the intention to hold the property themselves or they want to make it available to the market. It's a complicated issue, which I wouldn't elaborate uh, now. Uh, but let me summarize what I said before. From the government side, we need some incentive policies from government. From the architect's point of view, um, they just need some technologies to enable that to happen. Um, from investment point of view, investor point of view, all they need is to have a reasonable expectation and calculation of their long term ROI investment. And uh, of course, there is one more important factor which also really matters. It is the public awareness of uh, green building and sustainability. So that's the most important thing to push this thing forward. Now that we're here next to Shanghai Tower, almost complete, what do you think will be the most important uh, impact of the, the tower on the city's urban experience of Shanghai? Uh, let me first uh, walk you back to 100 years ago. Back then, uh, around, along the Bund area or Bond area in Shanghai, uh, there was a horizontal structure buildings block by block, uh, which is as long as 1.5 kilometers and to the total area of uh, 600,000 square meters. So back then, it was uh, the concept of the vertical design block by block. And then, when years, 100 years back into today, uh, if you look at the Shanghai Center, which is a uh, tall, tall tower of vertical structure, so I think that uh, is a landmark that mar uh, marks a uh, major transformation uh, of what happened 100 years ago versus 100 years back, from horizontal to vertical. But with that, we will bring new, uh, completely living style for the urbanizers. So I think in terms of specific changes or impact we will have on the urban experiences as follows. For one thing, uh, it will change our uh, local urbanizer or, or residents uh, traditional living habit. And secondly, uh, for another thing, um, it will actually, uh, instead of providing just a single functionality building uh, for the uh, for the city down center, downtown dwellers, uh, it will connect a lot of uh, ideas like uh, community, vertical construction, uh, culture, and people orientedness. All these concepts and ideas will be inter interlocked and interconnected with each other with the raising up of the Shanghai Center. So if that is true, that will meet people's uh, needs, especially for those people who live in the downtown area. So instead of just providing uh, hotels, shopping centers, uh, office spaces, what we are uh, providing is new experiences for urbanizers.